Hey buddy, I hope you're doing well. So, ID token, access token. What is the difference? Wait, what? Who are you? Refresh? Okay. Okay, fine. I'm going to talk about you as well. For now, go back. Okay, so let's focus. I'm going to talk about that guy as well. So, ID token and access token. Most of the time, we get confused. What should I use? ID token or access token for my application authentication authorization? Well, both the tokens have user information. If I get the user information, I can make some logic where I can check who the user is, give authentication authorization according to that, right? This is what we think and we get confused. Well, everything is designed for some purpose. Take an example of string. String can store alphabets, it can store number as well. But should we really start using string then? Wherever we need number, no. We declare int, right? So, and we know that, you know, everything is have some limit and that is why these things are designed. Similar with ID token and access token. We're going to understand this concept, the difference. Let's go ahead and I will draw one diagram that will give more clear picture all of these concepts. So I'm damn sure you are not going to forget this concept ever after seeing all these concepts. This diagram and other information that I'm going to share. Okay, so let's go ahead so I can show you. Okay, so I'm going to use lucid chart to demonstrate the flow, the difference between ID token and access token. So let's go with that flow first. So what I'm going to do, let's imagine you are a user. So let's say this is user, right? And what we will do, there is a one browser, you open any browser, Chrome, Firefox, any browser. So let's say this is browser. Now you open a browser and this browser pop up for sure you know you have to say hey this is my website right so you enter that details and it asks you for that login thing so what do you do you provide the information your username and password right so you forward these details and what browser does it will go to one server that server would be open id so open id is a specification that is used to grant id token so id token is built on open id specification so just keep this word in mind so open id remember with the name id that means id token okay so this is a specification now let's say there is a server called open id uh, server right and it give back browser that id token right so let's say id token okay perfect now this browser have id token it goes to the real website that you need so this is your website so uh, 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 yeah this is website and this flow is id token flow this is how id token works this is how user get the id token so in other term id token we call as a user token as well because user have to provide the information username password those details and then it goes to id server that is how it receives that id token and then finally you are able to access that website now what is that access token okay so i'm going to talk about other details also but this time our focus is on the flow only how id token get generated how access token get generated so we are done with the id token okay so now let's just copy paste this thing and what i will do i will come here and i will paste it okay so with this user is logged into the website but user still can't see any data because they don't have access to the api side now to get the access of API side, user need a access token because API side should only accept access token, not user token. Why? That I'm going to talk about. Why only access token, not ID token, right? But let's go on the flow now. Okay, so this information would be same. User is able to connect to the website. Now, now user needs some data on the website. So what will happen here? So website, website will be treated as a client. Now, instead of user, website will go to the server to OAuth server. So what will happen? So let's say okay, this is website and uh, uh, so this is website and there is a one server called OAuth server. So this is your OAuth server. Now, 
OAuth server will provide access token to this website, not to the user. Remember, to this website. Now further, this website let's you know put access token here as well, so we can know. Ah, uh, 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 it is giving access token. Okay, now further here. So let's remove this, so I can put new line. Okay, so now here. Ah, uh, so here would be your API, right? And API need what? It need access token. And finally, when access token is granted, user will see the data because API will start sending back data to the website. So this is how ID token and access token is required. So consider ID token as a front end guy, access token as a back end guy, as a back end developer, right? So ID token is just used to log it into the website your front end website but to look at the data you need access token okay so i hope this flow is clear now what i will do let me generate these tokens as well then i can decrypt those token and i can show you the information okay so let's go to postman and generate token so this is my postman and what i have to do so this is you know that i'm using ropc and ropc that i've already created a video what ropc is and how you know it works what are the information needed so what you can do if you go to my channel i've already created a video called you know uh, for ropc where i'm describing how we can generate a token using ropc so there's something called uh, it is yeah this one so this is giving all those information so how i have configured well let's close this and let's come back to the here okay so these are the tokens that i have generated right and if you see i have this access token refresh token and id token as well so in one go i have called all those three things right so let's focus on you know before you know access token id token and this refresh token there is something called bearer now you have noticed whenever we pass a token we also say hey this is bearer so bearer and you then paste and then you paste your token so what is that bearer so treat bearer as that person who is going to get access of resources on your behalf that means what api will say hey i don't care are you the real person or not for example my name is parveen now my api won't care if this user is really parveen or not he will say whosoever has this token he is bearer for me now that bearer can make a request on your behalf and i'm okay with that that is your loss that you have provided your token to someone so be very careful don't share your token with someone else otherwise they may mess with your resources your data your api anything so be careful okay so that is what bearer is now this is access token and this is id token let's understand this first okay so what we're going to do we're going to use a online website which is you know jwt so jwt token if i say and i go to this website this website we are going to use to decode our token and then we will understand okay so let's just go here select this is my access token paste it here right so this is your access token now duplicate this tab right so we can decode id token as well and then we will see the difference okay so let's go ahead copy this and paste there you go right so this is encoded this is decoded now talk about the differences well what jwt is first why they are the jwt token so jwt is just a json j is json w is web t is token so json web token that keep your token information in the json format and that is how it called json web token okay so all these tokens whether it is id token or access token the similar thing is these tokens are made up of three things remember three things so these three things are first is header so this part before this start this part that you see this is your header which is encrypted now the second part second part is payload after first start the information that you will see this would be your payload here you go right then the signature the third part that you will see that is the signature right and similar you will see in the id token as well 
the first part before dot is your header the second part is your body and third part is your signature right so that is how this token is built now access token is not necessary that it should be always a jwt it could be a normal string also that is all depend how you have configured your server but the id token id token always have to be jwt token only so that is the one difference now let's talk little details about headers what is header actually header is just a metadata that you know it give information my type is jwt right and what algorithm i'm going to use that is rs256 even if you, you know, mouse over this you see alg i can see signature or encryption algorithm right so this is the algorithm that is used for encryption same signature should be used for here as well you know this verify signature right so now these things that you see this key id this is the key that is used to encrypt in that algorithm so these are the key details one thing that you need to know that header what is header so header is just you know provide the information the metadata what are the things that is being used to encrypt your token now this payload will give you the whole body all the data it will give you user information it will give you the audience id it will also give you the app id now these two things are very important right actually three things audience id in access token i'm talking about access token in access token three things are very important one this audience then this app id and then there would be a scope so if you scroll down somewhere let's scroll down uh -uh -uh. let's see can you see scope 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 i don't see i think i missed it somewhere oh let's find you know i'm very poor in finding so let's say sc here you go so do you see the scope i'm talking about that is the difference so let's talk about what is audience so is a your client id the client the app which has made a request so if you go to the diagram this website have one id right that id is the audience id this audience id now the second is app id this is your server to which this request has to be made so that is your app id in this case this diagram if you go this api has the that app id so this app id you see this is of that api id that is how this token know that you know this token means this application is only granted for this app id now the scope now this scope actually give you the authorization right because access token is used for authorization purpose that will define that access that you have is read only write only or you have an admin role or you have this role or you are a normal user so this scope is giving you provide all those information what level of access you have to this api this api endpoint so you will have that information under this scope scp okay now if you look at the id token this is id token for again you know all those things same header payload and that signature right now you will see also at the audience that is similar right so audience we know now if you look at here we don't have anything called app id right because id token let's go back to diagram id token only used for your browser right it don't need to which api i need to communicate perfect so this has that information that audience but it don't have that app id right now if you look at it don't have the scope as well through which it can know what would be my role so this token don't have that information and that makes difference between id token and access token that is why id token should be used only for authentication purpose for your website but when you need specific permission on the resource to the api endpoint because sometimes if you go to the live example some of the endpoint we only allow to admin some of the api endpoint we allow for public some of the api endpoint we allow for that specific role right that information you can only get from access token and that is under your scope right and then there is an app id as well in the access token so this app id which help us to detect to which api it needs to be connected now so we know go to any website and you would see on the right side there is you know we display hey this user is logged in there is an email 
this is the name so all of those information we fetch from the id token now you can for sure fetch some of the information from access token as well but access token is for authorization you should not use that access token for showing the user information so and in the id token we can also send back username first name last name display name email id gender profile picture all those information as well so but it is not necessary most of the time id token is used to display that right corner for that user profile okay so that is clear now let's come back if you see here if you just mouse over this under jwt.i website and you will see it is giving you all those information so this says who has granted the token so this url has this is the server sts.windows.net so when i say this server that means if you go to the diagram again this is access token so that means this server stswindows.net has provided this information right and again if you go to here login.microsoftonline.com this is the issuer in this case so in the id token uh id token that is the server this is my server issuer now at what time this token was issued so this will give you that information that date that time right now this nbf that means it should not be valid before this time when it was generated if you try to use that before practically you can't use that before but still you know if someone try to manipulate with date and time of the server still you can't use that okay now when this token will get expired this thing is very important now here your refresh token will come so this is very important so it says exp is expiration time when this is going to expire now if you mouse over on the right side on the value side you will see this is going to expire on today date whatever date i have while i'm recording this video at 12 28 midnight and when it was issued if i again mouse over the right side of the value it says it was issued at 11 23 so that means more than one hour so one hour is actually the default time of token expire but you can for sure you know increase that time as well that is all up to you how you configure now access token refresh token id token where the hell is refresh token where we are going to use it so here you go so refresh token is just a string so this token is just a string and you can't decrypt it if you even try to decrypt it let's go and decrypt so what i will do let's duplicate okay and paste oh here you go right you see you can't decrypt it because it is not decryptable so that is the important thing about refresh token now where we have to use refresh token okay so whenever you are working on a website and you are working for let's say more than one hour but we saw that token is going to expire after one hour let's say there is a lengthy form you have filled that form and when you are about to hit that submit button your token got expired and you have been kicked out from that website to the login page how you will feel feel bad right because you have to do that same operation again well there is a birth of refresh token so refresh token helps access token to get a new token without any user interaction so refresh token treat refresh token as a very sweet guy which is which act as a helper of access token so whenever access token is about to expire access token talk to refresh token hey man my time is about to expire can you please give me some more time can you please go and fill that information whatever i needed to give more time refresh token says sure let me do that that go make a silent request get a new access token and fill that information that is how it keep that access token for a little long time so that is the difference between id token access token and refresh token now you know where to use what okay i hope you enjoyed this and if you enjoyed this don't forget to subscribe that channel because your subscription is going to fill my time to make more interesting videos for all of you okay so that's all for today video i will see you in the next video take care